Hey guys, Yiji Science here and today I'll be going on to Google and answer the most searched questions about each of the celestial bodies in the solar system. Chances are, some of these are going to be incredibly obvious, so I'll try to answer them thoroughly and not just a surface level explanation of what's going on. Now, without much further ado... Why is the sun yellow? You surprise me internet, because this isn't actually all that easy to answer. The Sun, as a star, outputs light, and, as Sir Isaac Newton proved, light has a spectrum. Visible light refers to the light we can observe as colors using our human eyes. Now, different kinds of stars output different kinds of spectrums of light. What does that mean? It means that the photons outputted by the star can be most dominant in certain colors. So, that's it? The Sun just outputs yellow light because? No, not even remotely, because the sun is not even yellow. If you look closely at the sun, don't, you will see it's actually white. Here's how the sun looks from space. The culprit is the atmosphere, in which various gases absorb parts of the spectrum. In Earth's atmosphere, yellow is the least absorbed color. Thus, here on Earth, the remaining part of the solar spectrum that reaches our eyes will be mostly yellow. On different planets in the solar system, the sun can come in different colors. Why is Mercury not the hottest planet? And I'm gonna assume these first ones are about the element Mercury and not the planet? Well, a large factor in determining a planet's temperature is its atmosphere. Very much more so determined than its distance to the Sun. Well, yes, the Sun is the primary source of energy in the solar system. But a thick atmosphere will really help you hold much more of that heat. Especially if you pump it full with greenhouse gases, like Venus or Titan. So basically the answer is that Mercury is much too small to hold an atmosphere which is thick enough to keep it warm. So while it receives more power from the Sun, it's unable to hold it and it all radiates back into space. Why is Venus hotter than Mercury? Yeah, I saw this one coming. It's a common misconception for people to think Mercury should be hotter than Venus, since it's closer to the Sun, and this would be true given similar planets. However, Mercury and Venus are two entirely different worlds. As mentioned before, Venus has a very thick atmosphere, and is thus able to sustain one of the largest greenhouse effects in the solar system. I did an entire video on the Venus greenhouse effect, but the bottom line is that it's easily heated the planet to over 450 degrees Celsius, while Mercury, which almost has no atmosphere, is not able to achieve this. It's therefore that Venus is so much hotter. Why is the Earth's core hot? Not a bad question, as you may have heard, the core of the Earth is as hot as the surface of the Sun. How? There's many sources of heat from within the core. The first is heat from when the Earth formed. The crust has largely trapped this heat below ground, and it has not yet dissipated into space since the Earth formed. A second reason is pressure from the entire planet intersecting there. As the core is the gravitational center of our world, all gravitational friction meets in this dense area, causing a lot of heating. And lastly but not least, heavy radioactive materials on Earth sink to the core and decay there. Essentially, it's a giant nuclear reactor down there, which also produces a lot of heat. Together, these three factors have made the Earth's core about 5,500 degrees Celsius. Why is Mars red? Ah, Mars, well known as the red planet, thanks its color largely due to the rusting iron in its crust. Mars' surface is scattered with iron-rich rocks exposed to the open air for millions of years. These have slowly become oxidized, giving Mars a red-brown rusty look. This is what makes the red planet, well, red. Why is Jupiter so bright? Well, that's an odd one, as Jupiter isn't the brightest planet. That title goes to Venus, which is almost 100 times more bright than Jupiter. Mars is just as bright as Jupiter, even though it's much closer. Which begs the question, why is it still so bright? Well, a large part of the reason has to do with the fact that Jupiter is humongous. 
Having a large surface means it's able to reflect more light than Mars. In addition to this, Jupiter is a gas giant, which means its entire surface is obscured by clouds. Clouds reflect the light very well, which is the very reason Venus is the brightest planet. It's for this same reason that Jupiter, despite its distance, is a very bright planet in the night sky. Why is Saturn called Saturn? Saturn bears the name of the Roman god of agriculture, Saturnus. Before the Romans, the planet was known by the name Phinos to the ancient Greeks. The Romans considered the planet Phinos to be sacred to their god Saturnus. And while the Romans are long gone, their etymology stuck. In the Greek pantheon, the equivalent god of Saturnus was the titan Kronos. And in modern Greek, Saturn retains the name Cronus. Why is Uranus blue? Yes, it is a noticeable difference from the first two gas giants, Saturn and Jupiter, that Uranus isn't brown, yellow, reddish, but instead wears a pale blue. The simple answer is that it has to do with a difference in compositions. Jupiter and Saturn are predominantly composed of hydrogen and helium, while Uranus throws some methane in. An overwhelming 2.3% is methane, which has turned the planet pale blue. Uranus, similarly to Neptune, has methane because it's not an actual gas giant, but an ice giant. It's much smaller and therefore has much less gravity to hold lighter gases such as hydrogen and helium in its atmosphere. Why is Neptune the coldest planet? I'm ignore the first question as I just answered it and it's the same answer for Neptune. Neptune is the coldest planet first and foremost because of its insane distance to the Sun. The Earth orbits the Sun at 150 million kilometers distance. Neptune is 30 times further out and orbits the Sun at 4.5 billion kilometers. At this distance, there is simply so little energy that the planet can capture. Per result, Neptune has a brutally cold temperature around negative 220 degrees Celsius. This is what makes it the coldest planet in our solar system. Well, that answers all of them, I think. I've tried to keep the answer short and comprehensive, which was actually kind of a little challenging. I'm not really used to doing these kinds of videos, but I think this was a fun project. Let me know in the comments if there are similar projects you'd like to see me do. And I'll see you in the next video. Yiji out.